All right, welcome back everybody. Jill here, your English teacher. Um, I've got uh, class two of our advanced grammar class. Um, we're getting started a little bit late today, but um, lots of moving pieces and I've got a great class planned here for you guys. Um, <clears throat> let's see, so uh, in our class on Tuesday, we went kind of really deep into the present tense um, we talked a little bit about the differences in um, English versus other languages and how um, English doesn't use the present tense as often. We use present uh, progressive or present continuous, some people refer to it as, more often. We also talked about the pronunciation of the final S sound in the present tense. We discussed having three ways to pronounce um, the final S. Uh, we looked at voiced and voiceless sounds. So if you missed that class, go ahead and um, go back to that. So it would have just been Tuesday's uh, advanced grammar class, class one. Um, and let's see, what else did we talk about? I think that's pretty much it. We did a little bit of practice together and looking at um, like I said, the spelling changes and then the pronunciation of those sounds. So today we're gonna do another deep dive, um, go a little deeper than we do in our intermediate grammar class. And we're gonna talk about the present progressive form. Um, so this one again is the form that I believe um, in, in, in American English, uh, we use this form more often. Um, especially and more specifically when we're talking about something that is happening right now. Okay. So uh, as I've told you, I really like to use, um, formulas. So I wrote this out here for us. This is the general formula for creating a sentence using, um, the present progressive tense. So as we'd also talked about in class, um, that English is an S V O language. So for those of you who are not familiar with what that means, um, it is generally the structure of a sentence in English. So there are other languages that are OVS, OSV, different kind of configurations. Uh, but English is in fact an SVO language. So um, let's get started with this. Um, this just means that the order is you know, we start with subject, then we have the verb, and then typically there's an object. There's sometimes and oftentimes things that are in, in between there. Um, but generally, th that's the order. And with English, it's fairly strict, okay? Meaning you don't usually, you, you don't, unless it's like poetry or some figurative language, you know, we really don't move that structure around too much. Um, okay. So let's see. So in general, we've got our subjects always. Um, I, you, we've got he, she, and it. That's that third person, okay? So I'll just kind of keep them together and pay attention to that. And then we've got the, the plural with I included and then plural from the third person, okay? I, you, he, she. So those are our subjects. Then we're going to add the forms of the verb to be. And if you're an advanced student, so at the C1, C2 level, of course, you guys probably know this, but let's just do a quick review so that we're all on the same page if you have not been here. And, you know, learning is always just a process of learning something, going back and remembering, um, as I talked about in the class on Tuesday, you know, I think what often happens is some of the mistakes that I hear from my students is that they forget this next part. So they'll say, I walking or I needing. Okay. So we'll talk about that too. Um, uh, I'm going to put that over here. So the non action verbs. I believe we talked about that in the other class, but I don't fully remember. So we'll just look at those quickly. Um, okay, so the forms of to be in the present tense. So it's present tense. We're using am, are, is, are, and are. 
Okay. I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, um, we are, and then they are. Okay. Um, and then you've got your main verb. Okay. So let's say walk, um, speak, um, share. Um, I'm going to just start using some words that maybe we don't know so we can kind of practice new vocabulary and, um, okay. So then we can also talk about some of the other rules here. Okay. So these are things that of course, with present progressive, we're talking about right now. Um, so if I say I am walk. And then, oh, what are we forgetting? We've got the I and G plus I and G. That's the other part. So this is the main verb, okay? And then we're going to add I and G. Now, with some of these, we've got some different rules, okay? And we'll take a look at those. So I am simply, we're just going to add I and G. I am walking. Okay, I am walking right now. Maybe you're on the phone and you're talking to a friend and you say, I am walking. Okay, speaking. Speaking. Now, this one gets a little bit different. Ooh, excuse me. Um, you have the word share. And one of the rules is that when you have the E at the end, we change the spelling. We drop that and we the I-N-G form becomes sharing. Okay, sharing. Uh, and the same thing happens here. Exhale is exhaling. What does that mean? Inhale, exhale. Okay. It's a part, it's the ex, it's the out part of your breath. All right. And then the same here, undertaking. Undertaking. You have to look look up that word. What does undertake mean? All right. Okay. So super simple. Um, the other thing that I would like to talk about with this form that we didn't really talk about in the last class is the adverbs of frequency. Um, if you want to use words like always, sometimes, um, never, okay? Um, where We need to talk about where that can go. So those are just adverbs of frequency that give you a little bit more information and description when you're talking, right? So, so, so even though I told you here that the SVO is pretty strict, meaning we don't really move things around a lot, when you've got these additional words, you can kind of put them in here or here. You could say always they are undertaking or they always are undertaking, or they are always undertaking. I would say it's most common to happen here or here for these words, okay? But it can go in the beginning, here, here, or at the end, okay? Um, and then keep in mind that these sentences are not necessarily complete. You, you are speaking is fine, but most of the time there's something at the end of the sentence. Um, so we also have this thing where you've got, um, you've got verbs that require a direct object. So if I say you are doing, okay, you need something else here. You don't just say you are doing, you have to say you are doing it or you are doing something or you are doing that, okay? So you need something here. You are doing something, okay? We can talk about that in a, in a, a next class here. I'm gonna put that here. So we know a little bit about the adverbs of frequency. Again, this is advanced grammar. So we move pretty quickly in this class because I assume that you've done a lot of this work already. Um, so let's see. Um, so let's look at these rules that I've discussed here. We started to talk about it here. So in general, the first rule is that the um, ing form is just simply 
the verb, the main verb plus ing. Okay, so for example, walk goes to walking. Okay, that's your general rule. Okay, we'll put a little star on this for number one here. Next, there's some exceptions, right? So we talked about this one where you've got an E, a silent E. Most E's at the end of English words are silent. Um, so um, you've got share goes to, um, so we'll do share plus I-N-G. We cross out that E and we have sharing. So the rule is if, let's say, if the, if main verb ends with silent E, drop the E and add ING, okay? Got it? That's my rule, the second rule. Okay, this next one I think gets a little tricky because people always forget it. <laughs> okay, so here's an example, hit. The main verb is hit. We want to make this um, ing, but we have to add something here, okay? So the, what, the correct form of hit in the progressive tense is hitting. So what happened there? I doubled that final T. So the rule is if the, we're going to say MV, which just means main verb, is, uh, ends with, many times in English we just do with, CVC. What does CVC mean? Okay, CVC is a consonant, vowel, consonant. So H is a consonant. I is a vowel, and then of course, T is a consonant, okay? Consonant, vowel, consonant, we can simply just say CVC, okay? So if the main verb ends with CVC, you're going to, you must double the final B. Okay, so that's your rule here. So other examples that we could do for this one are, let's see, we've got hit and hitting. Let's see, um, what did we say? Pin, how about that? Pin goes to pinning. Uh, that's just one example. How about, this is another one. How about spin? So this is not, this is not, it's consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant. But the rule is if the, the main verb ends with CVC, so this is CVC, the P-I-N, even though you have this S here, it still ends with CVC. So you can use, or you will use um, this um, form, okay? Um, I had another good one in my head now. Oh, um, spin, how about this one? Oops, that is getting messy. Plan, that's another one that is a similar to this one where it's got two consonants and then a vowel and a consonant. Um, so you can still, but it still ends with CVC. So you're gonna do planning, okay? That's the rule for that. Okay, now I have an exception to that rule. I know English has so many crazy things. So, so many of my students have always said, teacher, why is English so crazy? And I, I have some answers for that. And the rest of it, I just go, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so the final exception to this rule is that we have, um, even if it's CVC, um, let's see, I wanna see how they 
said it in this book because I said it so much. No, I'm not even going to look. Okay. So if the CVC word, so for example, here's my main verb, okay, fix. And when I add ing, guess what? Even though it's a CVC, I'm not going to double that. So it's going to be in its final progressive state, just fixing with one X. Okay. Um, I can't explain that, but <laughs> the, so the rule here is um, if the CVC form, or let's say word, how about that word um, ends with X W or Y do not double the final consonant. Okay, so the fixing, uh, let's see, let's do some. So we've got fixing, that's easy. We've done that already. How about sew goes to sewing? And um, play, how about that? Play, we do not double the Y. So we're gonna say playing, okay? Playing. Hmm. Okay, so those are our rules for the day um, and for your present progressive, all right? Um, great, okay. Actually, I'm going to take a quick picture of this that can help some other people in our other classes. Okay, great. All right, so let's move on. We Now we know the spelling rules. Let's take a look at, um, we, we already looked at the negative tenses, um, or maybe we didn't. Um, let's look at that. So we know here how to form the present tense, right? Okay. We know where the adverbs of frequency go. Let's talk about when we make these sentences negative. Okay, what happens there? And where how our formula changes. So if I want to say this sentence in the negative, I'm going to put not here, okay? So we're gonna insert not between the form of to be and the main verb that has the ing. So I am not walking, you are not speaking, she is not sharing, we are not exhaling, that's a bad thing. Um, they are not undertaking that project, okay? So super easy for that there. Remember the contractions, okay? And the pronunciation. Let's do a quick review of those contractions that we use. So for this form, okay, so we've got I am goes to I'm. Um, and here's the pronunciation. If you've missed my other classes where we discuss pronunciation, I really think that you should join because I think that pronunciation is one of just the most under taught and um, well not and under taught aspects of English okay and so we really in in the pronunciation and fluency class we really start at the beginning so that you have like a really good foundation for building on top of that to have great pronunciation okay so this is the pronunciation of it. It's obviously not the spelling. Spelling, pronunciation. When I have these lines like this, we're using the International Phonetic Alphabet and the letters that go along with it. So actually in my class yesterday, we started with the vowels and are, we are learning and or reviewing, for those of you who have done it before, we are reviewing the, the um, the International Phonetic Alphabet, and we started with the vowels, okay? I'm, so it's the long I sound, okay? Um, you are, is your, okay? These are 
perfectly fine in written English, um, even in a pro professional email. Uh, it's not colloquial. Um, people in, in um, so it's fine in written uh, in an email to your boss, it's fine. If you are writing a professional document, I would say, um, well, you wouldn't probably be using these tenses anyways. For example, if you're a scientist or a doctor and um, you know, then you're using a, a very different tense, you're probably using like a passive voice or, uh, and what I mean by passive voice, you can say, if you're a doctor, you can say the patient was treated so that's like that passive voice that just sounds like more sciency or more medical, more professional. Um, so if you're writing in professional, um, you know, a journal or an article, you probably wouldn't be using the the contractions. But in in you know in work and and everything else and letters and things like that, it's completely completely fine. And of course, of course, we use this in spoken English as well. Mo mostly nobody says you are if i am saying you are ready for bed i'm angry <laughs> if i'm if i'm saying you're ready for bed it's just a statement right so when we separate those and we don't use the contractions there's typically a reason for it i'm trying to to draw out a point or maybe i have emotion around it i'm angry or i'm really trying to make sure somebody understands what i'm saying but most of the time I will say, you know, I mean, 99% of the time I'm going to use the contractions. Okay. I am, you are, she is, goes to she's. Okay. He is, is he's. I want you guys to also be paying attention to the pronunciation to these. Oh, it, well. It goes to its, good gosh, um, I'm running out of room. We, are goes to we're, and then they are goes to there. Okay, so if we didn't talk about this. Okay, let's do this. Pronunciation, your, so, or. So We'll talk about this in the pronunciation and fluency class, but there are, when you have an R after a long sound like this, um, there are some differences. What happens to the sounds with R sometimes, because it just beget, it gets a little difficult to have, you know, our R sound in English is, is pretty different from a lot of other languages. It's very round. Um, R, it's, and it's a, it's a fricative, meaning you can draw it out. Um, so we'll talk about that in another class, but just kind of keep in mind that R kind of, they call it color the sound. It can kind of change the sound a little bit. And that's also why, you know, a lot of kids, native English speakers, as they're learning the language, R is one of the most, if not the most difficult sound. So many kids don't even fully, um, they're not fully able to properly express that sound until maybe eight or nine years old. Um, so like this word, um, world or bird or girl for many years, um, you know, one of my kids couldn't say this one. They would say, whoa, 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 you know, so it was, it was, it wasn't coming out right or bud instead of bird, because it's, you know, it's a really back here sound, girl, be like, go, <laughs> it's, it's difficult, especially with this RL at the end. So that can be, that can be really tricky. So anyways, that's a little bit of a tangent for you there, but um, okay. And then lastly is there now this, you know, in English, obviously we have three 
homophones with the word there. Um, and it's there, there, and there. It's like, I know these things are, again, these are the things that drive people crazy. <laughs> so this is the one that we're doing, but these are all pronounced in the exact same way, but they have three different meanings, right? This is the possessive pronoun. That's their house. Okay. Their, as in not here, it's there, right? It's talking about a location, but that's something that's farther away. And then there is the possessive, um, the, it, or excuse me, it's the contraction. This is the possessive. That's the location. This is the contraction of they are. Okay. That, and so then we've, we've got, this is the sound. Can you guys see that all the way down? The, that's the voiced TH sound there. The, oh gosh. Air, air. Actually, I think I would probably say it's more like this. Okay. So when you look at the um, the international phonetic like uh, alphabet, there are a couple of different iterations or versions of it. Most, you know, if you let's say there's three different styles, most of them have the same um consonant sounds and some of them just vary with how they write the um the vowel sounds and then some of them have a little more you know slashes and things that kind of can show um stress or different sounds that don't exist necessarily in english but um Keep in mind that you can take the, I, I really, really recommend, and it's a great combination, is the pronunciation and fluency class, because I really think, especially if you're, you know, you're doing these grammar classes, it's just such a nice co combination um, to make sure that you're getting all parts of it. And I really try to link things together, you know, I, you know, so in the grammar class, we're talking about some of the pronunciation points. In the pronunciation class, we're going to go way deeper into those points and really teach the rules like we're learning here, right? These rules about how you, um, how you share or how do you, you know, change, drop the E, double the T, any of those things. Those are just the rules of English. Um, and there are rules that kind of help you to at least organize in your brain the pronunciation uh, of English, which I think is more complex than any other aspect of um of english learning in general um and the part that creates the most frustration okay i and i had a a big conversation with the class yesterday about this too you know having um some i have some stories about students who have had some pretty big problems with um with teaching or with speaking english right so I think it's just one of those aspects, especially um, that people, even if they're speaking English on a daily basis, you could be making mistakes and might not even know that you're making this mistake. Uh, I've told this story a couple of times. Um, one of my students who I worked with for a couple of years ago, um, she uh, had been, she still lives in the United States. She's married to an American guy. They've been married, I don't know, maybe five years. Um, and anyways, she and her sister were doing a class with me and they decided, uh, we were reading a story and I was reading and then they were repeating after me. They really wanted to work on advanced grammar, um, and pronunciation and cause they were very high level. I mean, they were fluent English speakers, in my opinion, but they really, you know, had this feeling like, oh, sometimes people don't understand me and I really hate it. And so let's practice. Um, anyway, so we were in our class and I read the word salmon, right? Uh, salmon like this. I said this word salmon and she was like, wait, teacher, what, what did you just say? She's like, can you repeat that word? I was like, sure. Salmon. Um, and she was like, she's like that's not how it's said don't you say salmon and I was like uh no I know this is how we say it <laughs> you know anyways so but the look on her face was like sheer 
like just she was mortified right she was like I cannot believe I've been saying that wrong for like 10 years and nobody ever corrected me and so one of the things that I talk about in that pronunciation fluency class is you know you you have to do a couple of things if you really, really want to address your accent or increase your fluency or your what I like to call it's comprehensibility that, uh, you know, when you're speaking, somebody is listening to you and able to understand what you're saying. So your comprehensibility. And so in this case, she was saying Salmon and, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what she's saying. Or maybe somebody said, I have no idea what she just said, but she was so mortified and just like couldn't believe that nobody had ever corrected her and she's been saying it wrong the whole time. So these are some of the things that I think I'd like to address in this class. And so, like I said, there something like this comes out of nowhere, kind of, but there are some rules. And so learning the rules um, and learning the alphabet, this, you know, helps in all areas. So, um, okay. So we've got the present we know the negative, or excuse me, the, the affirmative. We've got the negative. We know the contractions. The last piece I'd like to talk to you guys about before we jump into working on some exercises together is, and when I say exercises, we're not jumping around. We're going to work on English exercises or practice. So the last kind of piece is when you create a question, right? So like a question and we're going to you know there's a couple different kinds of questions we're going to talk about the yes no questions so a question that can be answered with either yes or no okay so taking these still these examples here what are we going to do here's what we've done it's am i speaking okay it's kind of a silly question am i speaking sounds like you might be a so what's happening here is we're just moving the position. We're taking the verb and we're placing it here and we're switching the position of the subject. Okay, am I walking? Are you speaking? Okay, I used the wrong word here. Um, it, how about this? Is it sharing? Kind of a strange question but it brings home the point are we exhaling okay oops and then finally are they are they under taking okay okay those are the questions so we've just switch the position of the verb with the subject and then we've simply created the question and added a question mark at the end okay then to answer of course you can just say yes i am no i'm not we do not we don't do a contraction here we don't say yes i'm okay in an answer like that okay um, are you, yes, you are, no, you aren't. So that's a little bit different from the other contractions. So you can say your, right? You can say you are not. We didn't talk about that. You can do it two ways. You can combine here and make it your, or you can combine here and make it aren't. And you can do that with the second, third, and they and we, okay? You're not, we're not, she's not, she isn't. Okay, those are all the same. Is it sharing? Yes, it is. Or no, it, let's do the opposite here, isn't. I think you guys already know this. Yes, we are. So in the affirmative, you're not going to use um, the contraction. Or, no, we aren't. You can say here, no, we are not. But I would say, no, we're, we aren't. Or no, either way is fine. Okay. Um, and then finally, oh gosh, my writing is getting more and more terrible. Yes, they are, no contraction. 
or no, they aren't. Same thing. Okay. All right. Lots of good stuff here. Um, as always, you guys, if you're getting stuck, um, let's, you know, have you go ahead and um, let's see what else. I want to just check my stuff. Yeah, we're going to do the review. We'll do that on Tuesday because we've got to end here pretty quickly. I want to do one more thing here with you guys and then give you a little bit of review for homework. So what we do here is I'm going to switch this over and then I'm going to share my screen so I can see what is happening. Okay. So um, let's take a look at this. This is from our book. Read this post to a class electron. Read this post to a class electronic bulletin board. There are 11 mistakes. Use the um, simple present and the present progressive. Find the first mistake is already corrected. Find 10 more. Okay. So we're going to kind of use everything we've applied in the last couple of days to kind of make sure that we fully understand this. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm writing. So they changed. I write. I'm writing this note to introduce myself to you, my classmates in English 047. Our teacher is wanting a profile from each of us. So I see a mistake in this one. We don't use this wanting because it's, it's a non-action verb. And I believe we talked about that the other day. So we're going to is wanting it says what did it say find that so we're going to say once instead of is wanting we're just going to take this and do once okay hopefully you can read my writing okay at first i was confused by this assignment because my english dictionary is defining profile as quote a side view of someone's head everything to me sounds fine there at first i was confused by this assignment because my english dictionary oh no is defining so define is a non-action word too. So we're going to just change that to define, okay? My English dictionary defines, make sure, because this is a third person. My English dictionary is a thing. It's an it, right? So we're going to say, um, we're going to say it defines profile as a side view of someone's head. I thought, why does she want that, Okay. Now, there's a problem here. Why does she want that? So this is a question. And in the question, we use the do form, the do auxiliary. We didn't talk about this, but I'm hoping that you guys remember this. Why does she? So if we have does, it already tells us the correct form. So then we can use the base form of this verb. So we just simply take that S off, okay? Why does she want that, okay? This is a common, common mistake. So it really comes down to when you're forming the WH questions, okay? What are the WH questions? We've got who, what, where, when, why, and how, even though <laughs> how is not WH, we typically just call these all WH questions. So. So when we've got our, I am speaking or, um, you know, any, let's, let's just come up with, actually, let's not do this. Let's do speak uh, and let's create a couple quick questions so that you guys kind of just remember how we do this. So let's do who, who, so your, your formula is the WH, right? Does. And then we've got the do auxiliary, okay? Who does, she, so then you've got your subject. You guys see that subject? This is our formula. Um, let's kind of forget that here. Um, who does she, talk to, okay? Um, this isn't necessarily the present progressive. So this is just an example of who does she talk to? That's sorry, that's my question. So up here, we're going to put subject and main verb, and then kind of the remainder of your sentence. Okay, 
Um, if you want to use a present progressive one, um, what, so this one is a present tense, right? What um, is she wearing tonight? Okay, we're going to talk too about usage, about using this. Um, we can sometimes use um, present tense and present progressive in the future. So another, a good example of that is um, when does the airplane take off tomorrow? Okay, so you're talking about something that happens tomorrow, but you're actually using the present tense. Okay, and there's some a, a couple of different examples when that can be totally fine. <laughs> okay, um, where are they driving to? So keep in mind that you have to have that two at the end. Where are they driving? You need to have where are they driving to, okay? When, um, so these are present progressive. Let's do another present tense. When does the, when does um, the, garbage go out <laughs> all right so in our neighborhood there's a machine that comes by or a, a guy who comes by in a truck that picks up our garbage one time per week so we might ask the question when does the garbage go out okay and then finally let's do so this is present progressive this is present simple present simple Present simple, let's do one more. Oh, nope, that's present progressive. So let's do why is, why is, why are, but that, let's try a different tense. Why are they um, flying instead of driving? So you can notice here, I used one subject, okay? I used two main verbs with ing, but I didn't need to say, why are they flying instead of they driving? You don't need to say it twice. You've got it here once, so you can say this instead of this, okay? You don't need to, and you shouldn't use they more than one time, okay? Um, great, okay. I'm going to let you guys finish this class bulletin. I want you to find 10 mistakes. Let's see, we found two. And so you need to find eight more. So go ahead and do that on your own time. And we will look at this in our class again on, um, on Tuesday. So let me go. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, we will meet again. Uh, next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you all have a very wonderful day. Bye.